So here we are in the cockpit of the Beaver and uh, the first thing you notice of course is that there's no coffee holder, which is fairly disappointing. Um, but that's okay because it's about the only disappointing thing about this aeroplane, aside from speed of course. Um, the second thing you notice is that you're sitting quite high. So if you have a look out there, compared to where the Twin Comanche is there, we're a long way up and there's the tyre down there, even higher when it's on floats. Um, but the other good thing though is that for a tow wheel aeroplane, I'm not sure if the video depicts it there, but you've actually got reasonably good vision over the nose. Uh, the only spot you can't really see is the opposite quarter to the side you're sitting on, which means that we still do have to do some zigzags in the taxi, but um, not as drastic as a higher nose attitude aeroplane. Um, so have a look through some of the controls that are maybe not in other aeroplanes that are in the Beaver. Is um, Down here we've got the oil filler that we discussed earlier. Check we've got some oil. Put that one back away, locked. Uh, this one here is the fuel and oil shut off. So that uh, shuts off any fluids in the event of a fire. It's got to be lock wide so that we know when it has been broken. Moving across to the left of that, here we've got a wobble pump. Now that's to pressurise the fuel system with fuel before we even try and prime it. The uh, next step to priming, once we get to it, is move down to the primer. Down under the left hand door, which is very hard to access, and the whole reason that my leg is still holding the door open, even though we're in the aeroplane. Moving back to the controls down the bottom though, we've got the car heat, that's on, that's off, park brake, alternate air, all the normal switches you'll usually see on most aeroplanes. There's our mag switches, a typical switch on most of these older aeroplanes. We'll see it to the fuel selector. So we've got front tank, center tank, rear tank, and all the way back around. That way is off. We'll leave that one back on the front tank. We've got fuel quantity gauges there, which show uh, front, rear, and middle. You'll notice that they're sort of out of order for the um, for the configuration of the tanks in the aeroplane. Standard six pack, got a flap indicator there, showing a cruise climb, takeoff, landing and full flap. But I've noticed that landing flap is not full flap. The manual says to only use full flap in an emergency. Um, and full flap, which we'll have a look at shortly, is a lot of flap. Well used throttle console. You can see where someone's hand has sat for about the last 15,000 hours. Some of them are actually configured with the throttle in the center and the uh, pitch lever on the left-hand side, which is the military version of the Beaver, but this being a civilian one, that's uh, not configured as you would for most of your piston singles. And here we've got something you don't find in most aeroplanes, which is the uh, marine radio. Something we use on floats, but tend not to use an awful lot on wheels. Okay, so up to our left-hand side here, we've got another fuel selector which is showing the left and right tanks. So we very rarely use them simply because they're on the wingtip out there, which makes it nearly impossible to access. 